Hi, I'm Tim Naylor with RefTech International Systems. I'm here today to talk to you about our Light Evac Commercial Recovery Unit. We've designed this unit to be the fastest 115 volt unit in the marketplace to recover high pressure refrigerant, including 410A. A couple things about the unit, it does do 81 pounds a minute push-pull liquid recovery, as well as 2.14 pounds a minute vapor recovery. We do offer this unit now in a 240 volt, 380 volt, and 460 volt model, as well as we offer a water cool condensing accessory as an option. You're going to want to change the oil in your light evac every 8 to 10 hours of use or when you're switching in between refrigerants as to not cross contaminate. We ship the unit with mineral oil, although you're going to want to match the oil in our compressor and oil separator with the oil used in the refrigerant in the chiller you're recovering from. The process is simple. We're going to use air or nitrogen through the discharge of the compressor and we're going to pull the oil out of the drain port on the bottom of the compressor as well as the drain port on the bottom of the oil separator. We'll do the compressor first. What we want to do is we're going to open up the equalization valve in between the outlet and the inlet port. We're going to have our hose evac switch here into normal mode. With everything hooked up, we will apply air or nitrogen to the compressor. We will then use a service wrench to open up this valve three small turns. That'll drain the oil into the used oil bucket. Once done, we will turn our air off, we will tighten up that valve, and we can unhook our hose from the oil compressor. At this point, we want to take our self-evac valve and we want to release the pressure from the air out to the atmosphere. We will turn this valve to hose evac. It will only take a second. Once the air is relieved, we can turn it back to normal operation mode, hook our hose back to the oil separator drain port, We're going to repeat the process. We will open our valve, three small cranks on the compressor. We will open our air valve and the oil will drain into our bucket. Once the oil is drained, turn off your air, close your valve, unhook your hose from your drain port and again release that air to the atmosphere. Once the air is released, turn the valve back to normal operation mode and we're complete. To charge the compressor and the oil separator with oil, we're going to utilize a vacuum pump, again hooked to the discharge of the compressor. What we're doing is we're going to pull a, a vacuum on this while we charge the compressor, and then again pull a vacuum while we charge the oil separator. The compressor, we're going to charge with 17 ounces of oil. We'll pre-measure that in our graduated cylinder. As we pull a vacuum, the oil will be charged into the compressor. Once the full charge is gone, we will then unhook our hose to the compressor drain port, and we will take and charge the oil again into the oil separator to the oil separator drain port. Once the 16 ounces of oil for the oil separator and the 17 ounces of oil for the compressor are charged, your unit's ready to recover. For push-pull recovery, we're going to utilize a thousand pound DOT cylinder as a chiller, and we're going to recover into an empty vacuumed 1,000 pound recovery cylinder. I first want to show you the hose setups. What we're going to do is we're going to pull from the lowest liquid point on the chiller directly to the liquid inlet on your recovery cylinder or ASME tank. From the vapor on your cylinder, your recovery cylinder, we're going to take that straight into the vapor only inlet on the light evac. From the liquid only outlet on the light evac, we will be pushing into the vapor side of your chiller, the high side. What we're doing here is we're going to be pulling the vapor off the cylinder, 
we're pushing it back into your chiller, which is gonna force the liquid directly into your recovery cylinder. That way no liquid goes through our system. Now that we have the hoses hooked up, we know we have air in these hoses that we don't wanna push into our recovery cylinder. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna self evac the inlet and outlet hose. By keeping all of the hoses or all of the valves shut on the cylinders or the chiller, we are now going to open up our equalization valve. We are gonna turn our valve here to hose evac. And I am going to open up on the unit inlet and the unit outlet. And we are going to self evac the unit. This should only take a matter of seconds. Once the units reach 15 inches of vacuum, it automatically sh shuts itself off. We're then going to turn the power off to the unit, and we are going to start the liquid push-pull recovery. We are going to turn this valve back to the normal operation. We are going to close our equalization valve between the inlet and outlet. And at that point, I'm going to start opening up our valves starting with discharge first. We are discharging into the vapor. So I will open up my vapor valve. I will also open up my valve on the, the chiller. I'm gonna come back here and I am going to open up my discharge valve over here, which is the liquid inlet coming from the chiller. And I would open up my valve on the recovery cylinder. At that point, I can open up the recovery valve on my cylinder from the vapor outlet and the hose as well, which is going to be coming into my inlet. And the final step, open up the liquid outlet on my chiller, which is the low point of the liquid on the chiller, and open up the port on the chiller. With that being said, I can go ahead and start my recovery. I will come back over here. Because I do not want the liquid to come back through my recovery unit, I've installed my liquid float switch cable. This shuts off my unit when the cylinder reaches 80% capacity with refrigerant. If you're using this, you want to set the tank bypass switch to the off position. If you are not using it, you want to turn it on. If you're not using the tank bypass, we strongly suggest using a scale and measuring to 80% of the capacity as to not overflow and have liquid come through the recovery unit. Now that everything is set up, we would come over, we would turn the power back onto the recovery unit, and we would push the fan bypass switch to off. This is our condensing fan. We do not want to condense the vapor coming through the recovery unit at this point in time. That'll be used later in our vapor stage. But for the push-pull, we just want to push the vapor directly through and into the chiller. So once the liquid push-pull recovery is complete, you'll see in the light sight glass here, the liquid flow will stop. You want to give it a couple minutes to watch as small pockets of liquid still come through the system. Once those pockets of liquid have totally ceased, the recovery is complete and we would come over and we will shut off our vapor valve. The unit will then pull to a 15 inch vacuum. At that point, we can shut down our inlet and outlet valves going into the filters. The next step in the process is the direct vapor recovery. I've gone ahead and switched the only two hoses you're gonna to need to worry about during this process. What we've done is we've taken the hoses on each end of these filters and swapped them. So now we have the vapor outlet of your chiller coming to the vapor only inlet of the recovery unit and the liquid outlet from the recovery unit going into the vapor inlet of your dry, of your cylinder. Now that we have the hoses switched from the inlet to the outlet, we're going to keep our discharge hose closed coming off of the recovery cylinder on the liquid side allowing us to pull a full vacuum on both the chiller and the hose we originally moved the liquid in. 
With that done, I am going to start by opening our valves on the discharge side. And then proceeding to allow the refrigerant to come into the unit through the vapor side. Because we're doing direct vapor, we do want to condense this vapor. We are now going to take our fan bypass switch and we're going to turn it on. We want the fan on. That done, we can start our unit. This will pull the direct vapor recovery down to 15 inches of vacuum in your chiller and your hose. Once you reach the 15 inches of vacuum, the unit again will shut itself off. At what point we will turn the power off to the unit. We will make sure all of our hose connections and ports on the cylinders and the chiller are closed. And the recovery is complete. The unit still will have refrigerant in it, in the compressor, condenser, as well as we will have refrigerant in the discharge line going to the cylinder. To recover that refrigerant, you will hook to our suction port on the side of the unit. You would hook to it with a quarter inch Schrader valve, pull it through a standard small recovery unit, and into a cylinder in a vacuum. As I mentioned, the unit was originally developed for chiller work, but it has found its place in uh, scrap yards, refrigeration systems in both shopping centers, uh, grocery stores, as well as in process plants. Uh, we have developed technology with this unit to be able to pull direct vapor into a suction accumulator and be able to recover entire racks of shopping centers in no time. Um, Many other applications in scrap yards being able to pull down multiple units at one time uh, to, to alleviate any bottlenecks in the process of uh, any of these scrap yards and recycling centers. I'm Tim Naylor and I wanted to thank you again for uh, joining us in this video. Uh, I'd like you to see our equipment at www.reftech.com and if you have any questions don't hesitate to call or email.